A is the first of the Islamic calendar. Today is the first of Muharram. Um, 1400 years ago, the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, looked around to decide what is, how should we, how should we uh, date things? Because the Arabs at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and before the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not have a calendar, right? Did not have a calendar. They were illiterate people in, the, in general. They were illiterate people. And used to date things according to the main events that happened to them, whether it's a war or whether it's a death or demise of a great person or a, or a great natural event, whether it's a flood or, the, or the, the coming of the elephant to destroy the Kaaba, right? So we say the prophet, was, the prophet was born at the year of the elephant. We didn't say at the year 20 or the year 25 from such and such calendar. No, it's the year of the elephant. So the Arabs, they dated they have the calendar according to season because some of them were agri some, some, some people have agriculture and they have agrarian societies and some of them have just events that happen battles and uh, and uh, and um, raids or some great event natural or otherwise that happen in their society when the events start being you know succeeding and islam start expanding the sahaba looked around the companions of the prophet sallallahu looked around and said what is how should we date this is not working and they agreed upon one single event that happened in the life of the Prophet ﷺ as the tipping point. As the moment in history of prophethood, the moment of history of the missionary of the Prophet ﷺ that ch changed the tides of, of Islam. And they looked, and that event was the migration of the Prophet ﷺ from Mecca to Medina. That was the main event not the, battle, not the Battle of Badr, not the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, not the time of when the Prophet received revelation first, none of that. The greatest event that changed the, that changed the nature of Islam was the migration of the Prophet And that was really wise. And that was a great understanding of the mission of Islam that they have chosen that particular point in history and make it the main event that changed the course of Islam. Right? And since then, we date with it. We date with it. Today is the first year, first day of the month of Muharram. Right? So congratulations, and I pray that this year, inshallah, will bring peace to all of us. That this year will bring forgiveness. That, bring, that this year will bring transformation to all of us individually and communally. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask God Almighty to bring, to bring cohesion and peace and mercy to all the world. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring a lot of mercy and a lot of blessing upon, our, uh, upon the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Because we're going through a lot. We are going through a lot, right? Some of that stuff is done through our own doings and some of uh, and some of what we're going through is something that has been that's that's been plotting against the muslims and that's clear uh, very clear right there is no reason to think of you know conspiracy theory and all of that this is really clear right there's no reason to go against it. there is no reason to debate against that when you don't when you let a democratically elected president you go against him and you and and you, get, you go against him and you arm the people against him and you put a puppet uh, a puppet of yours in Egypt or in Saudi Arabia or wherever right those are our allies right uh, and against the will of the people who only want peace then there is a lot of plotting we still give billions of dollars to this is a fact we give billions of dollars to the regime in Egypt we give, we, 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 we give billions of help to, to uh, despotic regimes. That's a fact. This is not, this is not something that, that uh, this is not a conspiracy, conspiracy theory. So some of that, some of this, our situation is done through our own doings, our own understandings, and our own, and our own defici deficiencies. And some of it is done through the plotting of others. Right? So I'm going to talk a little bit about the hijrah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi the hijrah, the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at a time in which, in which he was persecuted and his, 
and his followers and his families. And many of them died. He was looking for a place in which he can worship God peacefully. And he exposed himself to the tribes. He saw more than 15 tribes before he migrated. More than 15 tribes. He saw them, went to them, visited them. Can you protect me so I can convey the words of my Lord? So I can worship God freely? And none of them responded. And we know the story of a ta'if. We know when he went to the ta'if what happened to him. He was put to, to bleed. And he was humiliated. And he was, and he was, he was humiliated. And, and, uh, and dealt with like, a, like the scum of the earth. And he was patient. And he was forgiving. And he was merciful. And he went back to Mecca. And the persecution increased again. And he goes by the Meccans. He goes by Mecca and he sees his friends being persecuted. Sidna Bilal is being put to fire. Sidna Khabbab is being put to fire also. Sumayya is killed in front of everybody just because she is a Muslim. Just because she won't worship God. That's all. And his heart is bleeding for everyone persecuted. And himself. Look it up in Sahih al-Bukhari how the Prophet said, he said, لَقَدْ أُخِفْتُ فِي اللَّهِ وَمَا يُخَافُ أحد. I was persecuted like nobody else. And I was put to hunger like nobody else. And like it, it happens that, I, that for weeks I have nothing to eat except something that the armpit of Bilal would hide. A little bit. They would share with Bilal, with his friend. Right? And that's the Prophet Right? So for, this, for you to become who you are and to enjoy the peace of Islam and to enjoy the, to enjoy the blessings of Islam, it didn't come cheap. It did not come cheap. And that migration of the Prophet وسلم, is not, is not, a, is not a, an act that is limited with time. That migration is open in space and in opening in time. Because the Prophet وسلم, moved the concept of, of migration from being a migration from one place to another place to a concept that can go with you anytime you go, wherever you go. You have to migrate constantly from something to another thing. Right? And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, Al-Muhajiru man hajara man Allahu anha. That the real migrant is the one who migrates from the land of sins. From the land of sins and heedlessness and carelessness to the land of, to the land of faith to the land of service, to the land of purposefulness, and to the land of belief, to the land of goodness. And every single moment we're exposed and we're invited to migrate. Migrate from a state of heedlessness to, heedlessness to, to a state of awareness, and consciousness, and knowledge, and repentance, and goodness. Every prophet migrated. All the prophets migrated. Look at the Quran. All the prophets migrated. Sidna, from from uh, Abraham, uh, uh, Ibrahim السلام, migrated. The first thing that he said when he was persecuted and he was about to be persecuted by his by his father and by the by the uh, and by the king, Inni muhajirun ila Rabbi sayyidin. I am migrating to God. He will guide me. I'm migrating to God. Sidna Yusuf migrated. Sidna Ya'qub migrated. Moses migrated, right? Talk, uh, talk about Sidna Moses in the Quran from Egypt to, to, to Palestine. And so on and so forth. All of them, right? Because, because migration is when you go out from a land in which you cannot worship. You cannot, and many of us right now, many of us came from, pla from places where there is a lot of persecution. There is a lot, there is a lot of political instability. For a place in which they can be safe. To worship God and to have a better future. Ahl al-Kaf, the people of al-Kaf, the people of the cave. Right? The young men of the cave migrated to protect their deen. Hijra, the migration also was a test of faith. It was a test of faith. 
Because the Quran talked about those who didn't mig migrate for no reason. And I want you to pay attention to this point. Right? A lot of people think, thought that it was a, it was a uh, migration was something that was, was a just a recommended or permissible act. If you want to do it, you don't want to do it. No, it was an obligatory act. The Prophet obligated, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ لَمْ يُهَاجِرُوا مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ وَلَايَتِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And those who did not migrate, you have no friendship with them. Because they have chosen, people who have excuses and reasons for staying back in Mecca, they have reasons and excuses. And they are excused. But those who have no excuses, except their, except their, their willingness to hoard, or to stay in a situation in which individually they might be fine with it. But communally, communally as, a, as a Muslim community, it was not an ideal situation, not a good situation. And the, the whole community has, has taken this, this, this decision, and God had taken that decision for the community, and obligated upon them, all of them had to migrate. All of them had to migrate. And he said it clearly in Surah Al-Anfal. مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ وَلَايَتِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ There is no, no it's, you know, the word wilaya in here that you, you cannot, there are a lot of privileges to, the, to migration, a lot of rewards, spiritually and otherwise. That these people are not going to, uh, that these people are prevented from getting because they have children to sit there nice and tight. Their faith is not put to test. Nothing, just sit there. You're, he's, they're comfortable. They're comfortable. And God came and rebuked them. They're so comfortable. So, so imagine if the hijra is called right now. And here is a prophet calling you to migrate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know what migration necessitates at that moment. A lot of people left every single thing, their wealth, every single thing, stripped from every single thing, and went to Medina and started all over again. All over again. And just imagine yourself in that situation. Imagine yourself. You're called to migrate right now. What would you do? You say, oh, you know what? I, you know, I have business here and I have this and that. And so I'm just going to stand. I'm sorry. The majority of, the, of us will fail that test. The majority. And I'll tell you why. I'll give you an example. I'll digress a little bit. Right? I'll digress a little bit. Right? So, as I said, we're called to migrate every single time, every single time, every single time, every week, every day, every, whenever you hear the adhan, you hear the call for prayer, and you don't respond to it, right? When, uh, you're, not, you're, not, you're, not, you're failing the test of migration. Whenever there is a poor person that you're not helping, that's a call for migration. You failed in that call. You failed in that test. Whenever there is... Something, you know, so, an injustice done in front of you. And you're not, you're not, you know, you're not getting into it. You're not, you're not, you're not trying to change it. You're failing that test of migration. Again, and again, and again. And I'll just give you an example of our communal failure, right? Our communal failure. And I'm not saying that to, I'm not saying that to rebuke us. I'm saying that so we can pay attention to our failures because this, today, today is a day of celebration, right? But it's celebration that happened at a time where all attacks from all sides. From all sides. Islam is demonized, Islam is, you know, and so, and so on and so forth. Right? And I'm pretty sure that a lot of you will go out and sometimes will feel like, you know, I just want to change my name from Muhammad to Mo. And from Reda to, to Ray. Right? And this is the reality. We are, you know, I'm not the prophet of doom and gloom. It is a bad state. It is a bad, 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 uh, it is a bad situation for Muslims because of the bad propaganda and because of a lot of Muslims are doing a lot of bad understanding of Islam is, is acting upon really bad, act, uh, bad um, uh, deeds that are not acting upon the principles of Islam are out there for. So I'll give you an example of, uh, of our communal, some, some of our communal failures to migrate, right? So... You go out, and just bear with me, right? Bear with me, and tie up the thing in your mind. They may not, they may not be related, but just, they may not look coherent in a very, in the outside, but just pay attention to it. A few days, just imagine you come out, of your, come out of your house, right? You come out of your house, you saw 10 people beating down two people, right? Two great people, strong and fit, beating down two people, right? 
you get close to the fight and you start that the two people are being beaten down badly, right? Are your brother and your son. You look at them and you say, eh, and you go back home. And you drink a cup of tea and you eat baklava or whatever, and then you, you watch a... You watch your, your favorite, uh, you know, soap opera, and you go sleep. Now, what kind of men, what kind of person is that? Would you do that? Well, we're doing it every single day. Every single day. Every single day. Every single day. You all know about the ACO, right? The American Center for Outreach. That is defending us all in Tennessee. Standing up to the bigotry of the ACT, you know, the, you know those organization ACT, that is... You know, just uh, Islamopho Islamophobic in, to the bone. They're collecting millions of dollars. This is the Goliath of the uh, Islamophobic in America. I don't know. They're worth 280 million or something like that. And they're trying to pass laws against the Muslim in Tennessee. They're trying to change the curriculum about the section of Islam. You know, so the curriculum in high school, they have a section on Islam, right? Which is done by people who are orientalists, people who studied Islam in a very objective way. And they said this is... Islam had a contribution to the civilization, civilization of the world, right? And they want to change that. They've spent tons of money to change that, to eradicate that and make something completely defaming for Muslims. And that's reality, right? That is reality. We lost a case lately about using the public schools. You know, ACT had, had, had sued the Board of Education of Farragut and Knoxville. They sued them because they wanted to use the public school against Muslims to do all the lectures and the meetings and so on. You just go and defame Muslims, right? The Sharia law, you all know about the Sharia law. If that law would have, had have passed, you wouldn't pray. You wouldn't be able to pray because that would be against the law. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be able to come to the mosque because that's against the law. So we had a meeting of ACO last week. You all know about it. We talked about it in here. Imam Rafiq did and so. How many people showed up? How many people showed up from the community? 25 of, of 3,000 people in the community, 25 people, probably, 30, right? And you know, you look at me and you're yawning and just like, you know, oh, again, he's going to talk to us about this. And I want you, this is, listen, this is the pulpit of the Prophet Wasallam, and I'm not going to hide it. I'm going to say it the way it is. You saw, this is, there are only two people working in ACO, two full-time people working in ACO. So you saw 10 people, you see them every single day. Ten people beating these two people down. Every single day you look at them and you say, okay, just leave them. It's okay. It's okay. Right, let's go back and just, you know, whore, you know, collect money and do things and, do, and, and that's it. Care about myself. What a shame. What a shame. You see all of what's going on in, around us and what are we doing about it? Nothing. We're not, ev we're not even able to make, to, to stand up to the, to just to stand up to help our brothers and our sisters who are fighting the civil, the, the civil liberties fight. We're not. Right? We are not. And we're losing talent. And, we're losing, and we cannot, even with the $200 million that these people are collecting, we cannot collect $100,000. We cannot collect $50,000. We can't. And it's not that we're not able to that we are not able to, we are a rich community. We are, in Knoxville, we're worth than more than $50, $50 million a year, communally. That's a fact. So it is your responsibility. Now, right now, how many people have membership in, in, in the masjid? Oh, I'm not going to embarrass you to raise your hand, right? Like you really have a membership. You fill out the form and you paid your... How many people? Right? And we talk about the hijrah. We talk about the migration of the Prophet. We talk about the hijrah of the... This is a hijrah. Every time you're called to make a hijrah. And again, again, this is how you build a community. And this is... If you give time... The Prophet ﷺ gave every single thing. The Sahaba had given up every single thing. Every single thing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single thing. We're not asking that. We're asking you to give from that which Allah Ta'ala had given you. Give 2%, 3%, 5% every single year. Make yourself, make yourself have a cause that you support in the community. Something that you support. Don't stay causeless. Don't stay purposeless. Because the, ta because the purpose of the hijrah is to create a, an ideal community. An ideal community. An ideal community cannot be created only if we sacrifice communally. If we sacrifice... <coughs> communally. And that's what the Prophet ﷺ said. 
He said, from, he said, he was asked about migration multiple times. What is migration? One time he was standing up in the pulpit and he was giving his sermon and he said, he said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالظُّلْمُ فَإِنَّهُ ظُلُمَاتٌ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالْفُحْشُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفُحْشُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَالشُّحْ فَإِنَّهُ أَهْلَكَ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ وَأَمَرَهُمْ بِالْقَطِيعَةِ So he said, he's standing up in the pulpit and said, oh, he said, O oh people, be careful of transgression. Be careful of, of tyranny. Be careful, again, you, you know, whenever we think of tyranny, we think of tyranny like, you know, in a, in a political realm. You could be a little tyranny in your house. You could be a little, a little tyrant in your house. You could be a little tyrant in your, with your wife, with your children, with your, with, your, with, your, uh, with your peers. You could be a tyrant, a small tyrant inside you, right? Acting, uh, acting with, in a selfish way and acting in a, in a, acting in a trans transgressive way, right? And because it is darkness at the day of judgment, transgression is darkness at the day of judgment. And be careful of... And be careful of, of indecency. Indecency in your work, indecency in your talk, obscenity. Be careful for that. Be careful, don't use that. Be careful not to fall into it. Obscenity. And be careful of stinginess. And he's not talking about financial stinginess in here. He's talking about spiritual stinginess. We are not able to give anything. We are not, you're not even thinking of giving your time, your efforts your, for, for a cause. That serves humanity. Now, you know, we would like to serve everybody in the humanity, but now we are under, we are under stress. So whoever wants to help should help his keen first. Should help his keen first, right? We are standing up to, we are standing up to Goliathus. Seriously, right? And we can only do that if we're all together. And if we're all giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're all lining up to say who's going to serve. What can I do? What can I do to make the situation better? We look at the news and we look at all of that and then we say, oh well, goodness, these people are so bad. Or yeah, we're bad too. Right? So we, you know, I, I put it on your lap. Here is an invitation for you to migrate. Would you migrate? Would you migrate? So when you see ACO is doing this or the school is doing that, you know, what are you, this is an invitation to migrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are you doing about it? And then the Prophet and then he, while he was doing all of this and giving his sermon, a person stood up and said, Oh, Apostle of Allah, what is really Islam? Now, a new man, a Bedouin, came to the Prophet right when he was giving his sermon and said, Oh, Apostle of Allah, what is really Islam? He didn't say the five, the five pillars and this and that. That was not, that's, you know, he said, that, you will learn that. If you want to concern, you will learn that. The, crux, you know, the, the, the depth of Islam is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and to sallima qalbaka lillah. The first thing is that you make your heart submissive to God. Right? That's one thing. But just, this is just one side of things. This is just one side of Islam. And, right? The second side is that, an yaslama al muslimuna min lisanika wa yadik. That the believers, right, that should be immune from your harm, right? You don't harm anybody. You don't harm, you know, that's Islam. The Prophet is telling the men, this is Islam, you don't harm anybody. You don't harm anybody with your tongue, you don't harm anybody with your, board, with, your, with, your, with, with your Facebook posts, with your Twitter posts, you don't harm anybody with your hand or with your, with your tongue. And then the man said, oh Apostle of Allah, what is faith? What is Iman? He said, the basics of faith is that you believe in Allah and you believe in His Messenger and the Prophets and the angels and the Day of Judgment. And he says, like, what is the best of faith? He said, the best of faith, the highest level of faith is migration. Is migration. He said, what is that exactly? So a Bedouin doesn't know, right? He said, أن تهجر السوء That you migrate from that which is evil. That is the real migration. That is the real migration. And this is time for us to, to really migrate from the land of laziness, from the land of, from the land of purposelessness. Purposeless. You can stay in the mosque for five, 25 years and never paid your dues as, as a member. You never fill out that. You come in here, you benefit from that. Never done it. Never done it. 
And it doesn't click in your heart that this is something, all right, this is something wrong. You, you, you're, you're, you're invited to give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say, okay, no, there are some people who are going to do it. Even if you have, if you have $10 in your pocket, give $1 from it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of helping humanity. Do you know how many people come in this mosque, Muslims and non-Muslims, and they're helped through the zakat of people? Muslims and non-Muslims, right? How many lives are changed through your dollars or 50 cents, right? Lives are changed. So my brothers and my sisters, as we celebrate, our celebration is, our celebration should be a moment of thought for us. Should be a, should be a moment of contemplation and, and pondering upon the situation. And it is the responsibility of each one of you to migrate towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, towards, towards the land of giving, towards the land of changing the realities. The, our realities will not change except of you and you, and you, and you, sister at the back, and everybody change their status and change their realities. If that happened, then our future will be changed. Then our future will be better. But if we keep on damning what's going on and just watching it, just like being, being uh, spectators, and our youth are lost, right? And our battles in the media and our battles politically and all of that are lost, and the only thing we do is that we, we complain about it then we develop a culture of complaining and the, the culture of complaining does not build men and women who can change reality. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم سنيما We don't do this uh, talk of heart all the time, right? We don't do it all the time. But we have to, to, have to do it time to time. I'll leave you a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وسلم narrated by Imam Bukhari in his Adab Mufrad. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna awliyai yawm al-qiyamati al-muttaqoon. Wa in kana nasabun aqrabu min nasab. La yati al-nasu yawm al-qiyamati bil-a'mali wa ta'atuni wa ta'atuni wa ta'atuni bil-dunya ala riqabikum. Fataquluna ya Muhammadu fa'aqulu haakada wa haakada. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, this is a message, I want you to keep that in your mind. If, if there is anything you take from this khutbah, I want you to take this with you, right? Take this with you, right? The Prophet ﷺ is talking to the Sahaba. And he said, my real friends at the Day of Judgment, my real friends are those who are pious, are those who are committed. That's my real friends. That's my, re that's my real family. My real family, my real family, uh, real family is those who are aware of God, who are uh, at the service of humanity. They are those who are aware, conscious of what's going on around them, and they are pious. He said, but I recognize the filial relationship. I recognize the filial relationship. I recognize that. I'm not denying that. I recognize that. In another narration, he said, that there are filial relationships that I'm giving, I'm going to give the right. I'm not, I'm not denouncing that. I'm gonna, regardless, I'm going to give the right of the people who are my... My kin, my, my blood relatives, I'm going to give them their right. But the, but the, the, the relationship between the, the relationship of those who are pious with me is higher because it is in the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not contingent. It's not accidental. Right? It's not accidental. It is something for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And then he said, Oh people, don't come at the day of judgment. Right? And people, other people will come with great deeds. You will come with great deeds, lofty deeds. And then you'll come at the day of judgment carrying the world in your back. All you spend your life doing, all your life is caring for your business. Right? Is, you know, making fat to your account or caring about the world, whatever it is. Right? Whatever it is. Caring about that's all you think about. You ask, come, come learn something. We have tons of classes. Come learn something. All right, inshallah. Probably next year. You add more jobs on your jobs to, to, to make yourself busy. We're always busy. From that busyness, what are you, what time you have for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What time you have for a community for community services? And that's that's crucial, brother and sister. He said you'll come at the day of judgment carrying the world in your back. And that's the that's situation at the Day of Judgment. Uh, uh, you have to understand that the Prophet ﷺ give a lot of metaphors about the Day of Judgment. How things are going to be. Right? 
And whatever you're concerned about in this world, at the day of judgment, you'll be carrying it. Right? That's how you'll be resurrected. If you're car- if whatever, you're be- you're, whatever you're concerned about. If you're concerned about the world and holding it, that's what you're going to be resurrected with at the day of judgment. If whatever you're concerned in this dunya will be your state at the day of judgment. You'll be resurrected according to what concerned you in the world. And this is his warning us. Just pay attention. He's warning you and me. He said, be careful now. The day of judgment, you'll come holding the world. All what you've done is holding the world on your back. Carrying it. That's all you brought. Right? It's all you brought. And then you come say, oh, Muhammad, rescue me. Muhammad, rescue me. He said, be aware of that situation. Don't put me in that situation. Right? Do not put me in that situation. The prophet teared. Because he didn't want to be put in that situation. Right? So whatever decision we make, consider that one day we're going to be exposed to him. Right? And you don't want to be among those people who say, like, oh, you're carrying the world in spite of you. You have no choice. And then he said, oh, Muhammad, oh, Muhammad. The prophet is giving them, a, it's a teaching moment for them. He said, at that moment, I will look uh, at the left and I will look at the side. I'm, listen, you're on your own. He's teaching them. That's not his nature. He would never do that. The Prophet would never do that. He's, we talk in you know, a lot of ahadith in which he's going to go to hellfire and grab people who had done a little good. A little good. He would go out of his way to, to help people at that moment in which they need help. But this is just to teach them to not rely on that, to be good people, and to go out and, and change the world, and change reality, and transform them. That's how, that's how he wants us to be. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those people. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are devout, among those who can change their realities and the realities around them. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put in our hearts right now, right now, to go out and fill out the form of membership of this message. Allahumma ameen. Right? You can make this dua answered right now. Right? You can make, you can, you can help the, you can help the, the qadr realize this dua. So help, you know what I mean? You can help the qadr realize this dua. Just go uh, right now. So let's make dua again. Oh Allah, make us good members of this community. The first step is to fill out the form that we are members. That's one thing. The second thing is, uh, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever, whatever project is open in our community, make us part of it. Make us part of it. Make us part of goodness. Make us part of transforming people from good, from bad to good. Make us, uh, make us people who are, who are involved in, in, in changing their, their, their situation and changing the situations of others to the good. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. We ask Allah ta'ala to be with us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Allahumma amin, Allahumma amin. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with every oppressed people in the world to alleviate the pain from, from the pain of those who are going through it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate the oppression from those who are oppressed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show them the light after the darkness that they've been living in. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his praises and his blessing upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the muhsineen, among those that follow his sunnah and elevate his banner. Uh, wherever we go, Allahumma amin, Allahumma amin. Inna Allah ya amuru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'idhu al-qurba wa ina'ana fahshayr al-munkar wal-baghi. Ya'adakum la'alakum tadhakkaroon. Wa'akum salati ya rahmatullah.